My name's Johnny Smith, AKA The Car Pervert. Welcome to The Late Break Show. I like celebrating cars that are just a little bit odd. And this car is exactly that. I've known about this car for a long time. Obviously it's a hot rod, but it's not quite as hot or roddy as we realise, because essentially it's been made out of bits of rubbish. And I love it for that. So come and have a look at it. It's wonderful. Oh, I'm going to do what Jay Leno does on Leno's Garage. He does a little thing and then he calls in the owner. Pete, come on in and tell me about your car. Hi there, Johnny. Hi, Pete. How are you doing? Doing fine, thanks. Yeah. Now, Pete runs Project Heaven, which is what's written on the side of the car. You might have seen this company before because they do all sorts of exotics and classics, but this is what we want to talk about today. The thing I love about this is <laughs> I don't know where to start. I remember you <laughs> showing me a photograph of this when he bought the body. Yeah. And it was it was in many pieces. Yeah, there's actually there's a tree growing through the middle. What's that? Around here, is it, I think it was the Peak District I went to. <laughs> so there's a tree growing through there, and when we pulled it, well, we had to dig it out of the ground. And then once we finally dug it out of the ground and pulled it forwards, the half of the body stayed with the back of the car, and the front came with the rest. Oh know? my god, it was even worse than I it thought. It was really then. bad because that's why this body is a different. The shell's a different shell, but the chassis's the original. Okay, so run me through. What what are the basic ingredients of this? Okay, so. Up the front here, we've got a BMW 525 TDS two and a half litre diesel. Lovely. Uh, and hidden inside here are all the electronics for that. Okay. It's, it's been chipped as well. Has it? So it's about 160 horsepower. It's not, not a lot, but you know, it's quite torquey and it's quite a light car. Yeah. Um, and then on here, I've ground all like the BMW logos and all that jazz off. I was just about to say yeah. that. This is all very generic looking. I exactly. Quite like it. Try, I'm trying to make it look pre war, really. So as if someone, <laughs> you know, Pre with a turbo back, on it. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. Back then, it was like, oh, how can we make a hot rod you know, in a hurry? Let's just slap all this stuff together. You know, that we yeah. find. So that, that's the air intake off of a Jaguar um, XJ6, for example. OK, yeah, um, yeah. There's some data plates off of a Blackstone's diesel engine down there. I was looking at those because I was yeah. thinking... The, 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 so the, right, so the chassis is the car you pulled out of the Lake District, uh, wherever yeah. you pulled it out, which was... So um, Rover P3. That's a Rover P3. What yeah. year was that? Oh, 19, uh, I Late think 40s? 47, maybe, I so, think. Right, as they old as this is the year my dad was born. Yeah, so they, they, didn't make, uh, they didn't make P3s for very long, I don't think, only a couple of years. And the P3 is the chassis, yeah. the axle. Yeah, front and rear axles, suspension, steering. Um, Great. That's it, really, that? yeah. Or is that? Yeah, that's P3, yeah. That's P3. The lights, yeah, they're P3. They're all, P3. The, all the controls, the dials, all that sort of stuff. Okay, and then this bit is? This is a Morris 10M. Okay. Um, it's a similar shape, just the doors open the other way. So, and then, yeah. so then what I did was cut the body off, so that off, the, off the Morris, Yeah. and then put the body right over the chassis. So the chassis is actually going through the car sort rather of body than dropped. under it. Yeah, yeah, so it's low, so it looks really low. Because I noticed when I sat in it, it's properly, pro I mean the chassis yeah. is well inboard. Yes, yeah. Isn't yeah. it? And then at the back, instead of leaf springs, it's been converted to coilovers, actually. Okay. So, we can, so you can adjust the height at the back as well. Pete's brilliant. <laughs> Pete's brilliant. Well, just before we started rolling the cameras, I said, well, what? I mean, what is it really? And he just said, well, it's, it's all built from scrap, basically. <laughs> so well, what it is, it is, it's a scrap rod. Yeah, it isn't is. It? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a hot rod, it's sort of a scrap rod. But, the, you know, the, the whole idea of hot rodding is, is kind of finding, you know, um, it's kind of scavenging for pit, bits. Yeah, that's right. So you wanted to do a diesel. Why did you want to do a diesel? Um, well, I was, I'm a bit tight, so I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to run the hot rod on vegetable oil. Okay, <laughs> so it, run, it runs on veg oil. Yeah, and this is the last, last of the diesels, you see, that runs quite well on vegetable oil. Okay. You can literally put half a tank of diesel in and half a tank of shit fat in. And, and no runs, mods and it's fine. And it's just fine, yeah. So yeah, it smells like a barbecue, but it's fine. I absolutely love that though. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very fond of a veg oil or diesel. Manual box? Yeah, that's the gearbox from the BMW. Yeah. Um, so that's quite slick. But, they, but the handle on it's off a rose sprayer. From an I was going to ask, I thought it was a rolling yeah. pin. No, it's, it's the handle off a rose sprayer. Yeah. A rose sprayer? Yeah, and if you look up here, there's the, there's the piston off of a... It is a piston. Off another engine, with the oil cap. It's got these really, you've got yeah. these lovely kind of 20s Blockley period tires. Yeah. So, 
good, but they're a bit sticky. You know, you can't, it's... it's um, they're deceiving. Yeah, they're really, they're actually really quite good, yeah. So this is like period rubber, but you know, modern compound. Yeah. So the, the old look. Disc brake conversion. Yeah, I've got the original drums. I might put them back on actually for the look, but because I drive it quite hard. Yeah, you do, you know, Pete. The, yeah. Pete, <laughs> yeah. Pete drives this hard. Pete, you yeah. know, when people build their own cars, they drive them really hard because they know exactly how they were put together. <laughs> Not a massive yeah, turbo yeah. it's not a huge power no. numbers they do rev quite high though the bmw diesels but yeah uh, but yeah it's, it's more about that yeah e34 was it was a good car though yeah. I, like, I like that and then inside i mean the body oh, look how much did you buy any of these bits for oh yeah so like the give me a shopping list so the the, the, the original car was oh the engine okay so the engine was 50 pounds i bought the whole car for 50 quid so you bought the whole donor car yeah. for 50 sheets <laughs> yeah and actually i sold the shell for 150 so i'm up on that by 100 pounds sweet yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, then the chassis, that was 250 quid to get the whole car, but I had to throw away the body. It's actually my pond at work, if you have a look. I d it is, is yeah. that what it is? That's what it is, yeah. So you didn't even throw it away no, even there, even it. though it's completely so that's, useless. that's corporate art now. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And then this body, this this P3, uh, uh, the, the, uh, was, the Morris 10. Yeah, that was I may, maybe 300 pounds, but I swapped some other parts in the deal, so I got it a bit cheaper than that. So this is a sort of time-rich, cash-poor project. Yeah, yeah. I built it after hours with my wife actually, and uh, she did all the interior panels. That was during her uh, Easter holidays off school. She's, she's a, a lucky woman. Yeah, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do in the Easter holidays? I've got a great idea. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can make me some aluminium door cards. Yeah, this is great though. Yeah, you don't care about it much because. I guess you've built built it to shred wow. it. Yeah, it's, and it's made, like you say, it's made out of scrap, so it doesn't cost much to fix. Probably my favourite aspect of the car is actually at the back here. It's these ah, am yeah. amazing double back tyres. Yeah, so so that, single yeah. rims, it's like a transit, like a transit van kind of thing. <laughs> well, yeah, they're, 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 um, yeah, they're quite unique, twin wire wheels. They used to make them back in the day uh, for hill climb cars. And yeah. uh, my, my business partner, he owns a wheel company and um, he didn't make them, I actually made them in a weekend with my friend Ken. What, you just decided to learn how to make wire yeah, wheels? Yeah, I thought, you know, let's, let's just make them, you know, screw you're, it. So the, hub, the hubs are actually off of an E-type, and what we did is drilled an extra row of holes in there, because there's an extra row of spokes, you see? Yeah. So the back wheel's laced up like a wire wheel on its own, and then you put the other one on, you put one more set of row of spokes in for the front, the outer wheel, you know? If you follow this thing on the road, it looks bonkers. <laughs> it looks absolutely bonkers, but that's what I like about it. So in terms of, like, cost, yeah. Collectively, forget uh, your labour time. Like it's going to be the tyres are probably the most expensive thing. I think if you take the tyres out, yeah, then it's probably under a thousand pounds. Is it really? Yeah, definitely. Sub yeah. grand. Yeah, sub a thousand pounds. Yeah. What definitely. a fun, fun thing. Yeah. But then when you got six tyres, sorry, one, two, three, yeah, five, six. No, tires. it is six tyres. Six tires. Yeah, it is six <laughs> tyres. You got six tyres and they're like two hundred quid each. That's the problem. <laughs> I, you know, before I take it out for a drive, can I, uh, what, what, what are the tactics for driving it? Okay, what so. What are the idiosyncrasies? The, uh, 
Well, there's no label on the gear knob, obviously, because it's a rose sprayer handle, so you're going to have to figure that one out. But, Pete, uh, listen. <laughs> You can't open a door of a car like this and think you're not going into a house full of dead people. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that's like... Yeah. Okay. Oh dear, I love yeah. the way it tapers in. And that chassis is so inboard. Yeah. It's so high. The, so the prop shaft it's is basically there. floating. Yeah, it's in the middle of there, but there's a cage around it in case it lets loose, so don't worry. Good. Yeah. I was going to ask that question. Um, and you've got the bare linkage here. Yeah, yeah. The rose sprayer. So where is, yes, yeah, so it's five speed. Yeah, so five, yeah, five speed, it reverses all the way across and push it hard, and then up. And then up, right. And then okay. everything else is just a, like normal. And then hydraulic handbrake there. I love the fact, I mean, that is the last thing I expected this damn thing to have. The, the sunroof <laughs> works, doesn't it? It does, yeah, they pull that lever and slide it back. It does actually work. Yeah. I lost this on the motor when I picked the car up, actually. It, um, it flew out on the, when I was trailering it back. And I, and I was like, oh God, I, I don't want to have to make a new one because of the patina. So we, had, we spent about two hours driving back down, down to uh, Reading and found it. You, you actually did yeah, find it? Yeah, we found it, yeah. It had been run over by 150 other cars. <laughs> it was in the side, but it was a bit bent up, as you can see, but yeah. <laughs> that, I, Cars have to tell stories, Pete. Uh, yeah. So this, oh, you can remove this like cowl. Yeah, so yeah, in there, you've got the, all the wiring, the batteries here, ECU, the, ECU, the funny horn, which, which doesn't work at the moment. Oh, the klaxon thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is great. I love it. Let's drive it. Fire in the hole. Getting used to the gate. I'm trying to work out how to position my foot on, on the chassis rail. Listen to the induction. I think the door's coming off, but it's not. When you get into someone else's little creation, you always... Always got to learn it and understand what's going on with it. Bit of a, this back axle is crazy. With a four back tyres, it just feels, it grips actually better than I thought. I thought it was going to be hideous. So the horn is a half crown drill. The throttle is right really high on the chassis rail because of it's being basically body dropped. here of course you've got no bonnet so I'm just looking at BMW straight six running on veg oil exposed shifting linkage the flimmin gardening implement on the end Um, it's raw, you know, it's raw. It's very raw, but I like it. And I like the thinking behind it. It's a cheap car with lots of interesting creativity, resourcefulness, a nice fixed hub, like a Citroen C4. It's time for me to let Pete have a go, because Pete's prepared to, I actually can't get out. I can't get out. This cost less than a thousand quid in parts, but it took time 
and it took a hell of a clever fabricator to put together what were undoubtedly three dead cars. Call it what you like, but Pete's 1940s turbo diesel Frankenstein is a right laugh, and surely that's what these cars are all about, right? Thank you for watching The Late Break Show. I've been Johnny Smith. Cheers.